and welcome to this tutorial which is looking at a new feature in the production premium and the master suite for Adobe CS 5.5 and I've got Premiere Pro 5.5 open and I've got a sound file in here now there is a problem with this sound file this could be any video sound file this just happens to be an actual um, straight sound file without video attached this is just to demonstrate the process of getting the sound file from Premiere Pro into Audition and then how to deal with the problem now the problem with this file is that the speaker can speak very loudly at some times and very quietly at other times and what I want to do is balance the audio so that the loud bits aren't too loud and the quiet bits are a lot louder how can I deal with that how can I actually make this balancing take place now there are a number of tools that you can use you can use a compressor which compresses the dynamic range brings the low bits up and you can use a limiter to stop it from going over the top but there's a new tool in Audition 5.5 which just makes the process so much quicker and so much easier I had to demonstrate it for you okay so you've got your video and audio file or whatever you have in here and then you right click on the actual audio file so select the audio file so it's selected right click and one of the options you'll have if you have the production premium CS 5.5 or master suite CS 5.5 you don't have this in CS5, all you have is edit in the sound booth, whereas this new tool is actually found in Audition, which only came in with CS5.5, and it's not a tool that's available in the older version of Audition, which is actually Audition 3. So you select Edit Clip in Audition, and it says Render and Replace. Now actually I'm going to cancel that because I've already done it. So what it will do is render it, and it's got a replacement version here. If I just open it up, we'll be able to see the versions. So there you go, there's the original file and it produces this new file which is called Original Audio Extracted and that's the one that all the work takes place in and it replaces the item on the timeline. So as you can see here it says Original Audio Extracted and then it will open up Audition and drop it into the workspace. So here is that file in Audition. Now if you're used to Audition 3, Audition CS 5.5 will look very different. It looks much more like Soundbooth did and it's actually in my opinion a much better way of applying and developing effects than the old way in Audition 3. So we've got the file in here. This is actually a sermon um, and the speaker is a fantastic preacher but sometimes he's extremely loud and sometimes he's extremely quiet. Let me give you a slight example of this towards the end here. If I just highlight this area here if you go to the very end of your clip and roll your scroll wheel wherever you have your cursor, so if I put my cursor here and scroll forwards I zoom in to where my cursor is or if I pull back I zoom out from where my cursor is so if I put it right at the very end of my timeline it's going to zoom in at that point and highlight this area so that's a little tip wherever your cursor is that's where it will zoom in and it will carry on zooming in let me just show you if I zoom in just here where this peak is, if I carry on zooming, 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 you'll get to the actual audio sample level. And up here shows you where the actual area of zoom is. If I pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, keep going and there's the area. If you want to move an area, previously you were able to click and hold on this scroll area here, but actually it's done up here, and you actually move your areas by clicking and dragging and holding this little zoom function at the top. Anyway, if we just have a little listen to some of the differences in volume. The worst trial imaginable. And you're being battered by this storm. And here is a rock. And at that rock you will find shelter. And in that rock you will find refuge. And security. And safety. And hope. So he goes to the rock. And he's safe. In the midst of all of our trials trials which are inevitable, trials which are innumerable. Remember that trials are invaluable and lead us to Jesus and are safe in Him. Now you can see the problem I've got. At the end of this sermon, this guy really speaks quietly and it actually even hardly registers that bit that he says at the end in Him. So what I really want to do is I want to balance this waveform so that the quiet bits are much louder and the louder bits are much quieter and before it was quite a difficult thing to do but now there is a new tool and let me quickly show you it. Now you apply effects in this area here called the effects rack. Now if you can't see it you go to window and you look for effects rack. Make sure it's ticked and there you'll have it. Okay. 
So effects rack, and you apply the effects in this rack, and they are not permanent. So you can add them and remove them and edit them until, at the very end, you click this grayed out button here, which is called apply. Once the apply button is clicked, all the effects are actually applied to the whole waveform and the waveform is changed. But up until then, you can apply a whole group of different effects and have them non-permanent and go back and edit them as you like, which is so much better than the old Audition 3 process. Okay, so where is this new effect? So if we go to the slot 1, which is here, and we click the side arrow, and we go down to Amplitude and Compression, and then right at the bottom it says Speech Volume Leveler. Click on Speech Volume Leveler, and already the effect is applied with some default settings. Now I'm going to click from this point here, so let's click about uh, about midway through. Now I've got the effect applied and I've even got the interface, but it's still going to play like it normally did. Again, in Audition 3 it didn't do this. So if I hit my space bar to play, and in that rock you'll find you'll refuge and change. security and safety and hope. So he goes to the rock. Look over here. And is safe Input there. levels, output levels. In the midst of all of our trials. So what you can clearly see from that is that the input level is very low, but the output level is brought much higher. Now this means it's peaked, it's overshot, so we can click that, and click that just to get rid of it and see it again. Now this is how they say you should set it up. Take these two levels all the way to the end, right the way to the left. Go to the quietest part, which is pretty much where we are here, and then start playing all the way along and pull up this leveler amount. Now what does the leveler amount do? At this point here, the leveler is going to try and cut out all the background noise so that all you hear, effectively, is the sound and hopefully not the noise. Whereas if you pull it all the way to this end, you're going to hear all of the background noise that's actually on the original recording. So this effectively is getting rid of the noise. So let's just have a little listen to it like this. So he goes to the rock. He's safe. In the midst of all of our trials, and if I pull it all the way to the other end. Trials which are inevitable. Trials which are innumerable. So you can hear that the hiss has returned. So you want to get a good balance. So you actually want to play it until the hiss is not overwhelming, so it's annoying you. Um, but also, you're not getting that sort of somewhat um, a pulsating sound when it's trying to get rid of noise and then suddenly come in and have the sound and get rid of noise again. So it's actually a balancing act, and you need to listen. So stage one is to move this leveler around until you get a feel of where it's about right. Stage two is where you need to go to the higher volume levels over here. In fact, you probably want to go and try and find some of the highest levels of all. I'm going to start there. And then what you want to do is pull up the target volume level until it matches audibly the sound that you had achieved by applying this effect in the first place. So it sounds pretty similar at loud levels to how it sounded at quiet levels. So if we just hit the space bar and I'm going to pull it up. And at that rock you will find shelter, and in that rock you will find refuge, and security, and safety, and hope. Anyway, you can play around and get the feel of how you want it to apply and what sounds good. Do note that there are some presets here which I have found quite useful. Quite often with this particular one, I might actually apply strong. Now it's going to give me quite an interesting look and it would allow me to have all the noise but actually all the background noise is bad for me. Too much hiss, don't really want that. So maybe medium, what's that going to look like? Mm, that's going to look interesting. To be honest with you, I've quite often used default and found that default's not bad but I pull this one back a bit. So you'll have to have a play around and see what works for you. I think for this particular clip something like that's going to sound pretty good. Do note that there is an advanced settings down here which is for adding additional compression and compressor and for a noise gate. I'm not going to go through those options, but if you have got real problems with noise, you can actually gate off noise below a certain level. So any sound below a certain threshold, you can actually make it disappear. And compression will just boost up very low level sounds, but we're not going to use those. However, they are applied if you want to fool around. If you go to medium or if you go to strong, you'll find that there are different versions of compression and noise gate. But at the moment, I'm going to stick it back at default and pull that one back a little, that one back a little, that's going to give me about the sound that I want. So that's now, if you like, applied, and I can just X off this interface. I don't need to look at it. It's still here in my effects rack. So effectively, you'd have said it's applied. And if I went to File, Save, well, let's have a look. File, Save, and I come up with a warning message. Effects in the rack will not be applied to the save file. 
If you would like to apply these effects to your audio before saving, press the apply button in the effects rack and try again. So I'm going to click cancel because I do want to apply it because I want you to see the difference it's going to make to this waveform. So if I click the word apply, it's then going to apply the effect. And because it takes a few minutes, I'm going to cut this bit out. So click apply, you get this wonderful little interface. And there you go. Look at the difference. Remember, this was invisible. We couldn't even see this bit at the end. This is the loud bit here, and these are the quieter bits here. Now let's have a little listen from about here again. Huge and security and safety and hope. So he goes to the rock and is safe there. In the midst of all of our trials, trials which are inevitable, trials which are innumerable, Remember that trials are invaluable. They lead us to Jesus and we're safe in him. So what we've done is we have balanced the whole clip out. Incidentally, that's gone back to the beginning. If I want to get back to the bit I was looking at, here's the zoom bit. Click and hold with the hand and just pull it back and we're right at the end. So we've balanced the audio. It looks a lot better. However, there is an awful lot more I would like to do to this clip. Um, certainly I don't think it sounds any good but notice that the effect has gone from the rack because it has been applied so if we want to carry on working without having to apply the effects one at a time if I do control Z to go back there's the original file it's back in the rack and now I can add something a lot more interesting to perhaps make it sound a lot better to sweeten up the audio but I think maybe that's for another tutorial I hope you found this useful. I really advise getting used to this speech volume leveler. It is incredibly valuable, particularly when you have somebody with a very dynamic range, as this particular speaker did. Then you apply the speech volume leveler, you still get the passion, and you still get the feeling of quiet speech, but the volumes are brought up and it works really well. Well, my name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.